Okay, welcome back to Anne of Green Gables. The chapter one, I believe you're on the very bottom of page four on your book. Um, asylum, stricken dumb, strict nine, sensation, pessimism, ejaculated, and uncanny are the words that are left for today. All right, so here we go. So when we last left, who had just gone to Green Gables? Who did we last? What? No, we haven't, well, I don't think we've done Matthew quite yet, because we just left Mrs. Rachel Lind, and she had just gone to whose house? Marilla's house, right? Yeah. Thank you. All right. So, so, Mrs. Rachel, before she had fairly closed the door, had taken a mental note of everything that was on the table. And I read this yesterday. I'm just rereading it for you guys, okay? There were three plates laid. Well, we know that just Matthew and Marilla live there. It's Matthew and Marilla Cuthbert's house. They're actually brother and sister, okay? Uh, there were three plates laid so that Marilla must be expecting someone home with Matthew to tea. And we said tea happens um, after lunch, before dinner, right? Um, but the dishes were everyday dishes. Now, do you guys have dishes that you use for company when special people come over? Yeah. So, like, we have china at my house. China, which is super, well, it's ex it is expensive, but it's fancy dishes and, like, like, you, we have, we have actually special silverware that's just for company, and we have special dishes and special glasses and stuff that we use. And it's got a really pretty pattern. The glasses are really pretty clear green. It's a dark green. It's really pretty. So but we, that? no, we used to just use them like at Thanksgiving dinner and Christmas oh, and right. sometimes oh, Easter. God. Yeah, like holidays because we don't use them very much. So like, you know, it's sp for special occasions. And then my mom got really smart. And she decided nobody should have to do dishes on special occasions. So now we buy paper and we throw it away. Yeah, paper. Um, paper plates yeah. and paper net. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Now, um, the dish, the china cannot go in the dishwasher. You had to hand wash the china. And then you had to dry them. And then you had to put them away. So even after you ate dinner and you put all your stuff away, you still had to wash the china. So, not, I'm not necessarily a fan. It, they're pretty, but I always didn't want to use them because I was really afraid they would break. break. China used to be a common wedding gift. Like, um, if you were getting married, a lot of times you would register. You would say, hey, I want this China pattern. And it would be um, something that you would get for your wedding. Um, that's not necessarily the case anymore. I don't, there's a lot of people that don't necessarily find it um, you, you, useful or whatever. You know, things have changed. I, people, I don't know. I've never priced them. Um, all right. So they were everyday dishes. And there was only crab apple preserves. Preserves are like jams or jellies. Um, and one kind of cake. So that the expected company could not be any particular company. Yet what of Matthew's white collar and the sorrel mare? 
Mrs. Rachel was getting fairly dizzy with this unusual mystery about quiet, unmysterious Green Gables. Good evening, Rachel, Marilla said briskly. This is a real fine evening, isn't it? Won't you sit down? How are all your folks? Someti something that, for lack of any other name, might be called friendship existed and always had existed between Marilla Cuthbert and Mrs. Rachel, in spite of, or perhaps because of, their dissimilar dissimilarity. So similarity means something that's the same, but they're very different. So they're very different. And so a lot of times the, your friends like a lot of the same things that you like, right? But this case, they are very different. Merla was tall, a tall, thin woman with angles and without curves. So she's skinny. Her, hair, her dark hair showed some gray streaks and was always twisted up in a hard little knot behind the two wire hairpins stuck aggressively through it. So you put a knot and then they put used hairpins to keep it in the head. Um, she looked like a woman of narrow experience and rigid consciousness, conscience which she was, but there was a saving something about her mouth, which, if it had been over so slightly developed, might have been considered indicative of a sense of humor. We're all pretty well, said Mrs. Rachel. I was kind of afraid you weren't, though, when I saw Matthew starting off today. I thought maybe he was going to the doctor's. So now she's fishing, right? Does she know what's going on? No, but she wants to know, right? It's kind of like when you walked in and I had an Easter basket on the desk and you're like, what's going on, right? I'm like, what in the chicken nugget? What in the chicken nugget? Okay. Marilla's lips twitched understandingly. She had expected Mrs. Rachel up. She had known that the sight of Matthew jaunting off so unaccountably would be too much for her neighbor's curiosity oh no i'm quite well although i had a bad headache yesterday she said matthew went to bright river we're getting a little boy from an orphan asylum in nova scotia and he is coming on the train tonight so asylum what do you think asylum means You're close. You're close. What? There were people are in Fayetteville. Oh, it could be that kind of asylum. Yes. So, um, in this case, though, it's like an orphanage. Oh. I've never heard that. You've never heard of an orphanage before? So, there's a couple of different ways you well, can... I've heard of an orphanage, but i never heard of an asylum like that. I've heard of an orphanage. Okay, so what is an orphan? So, an orphan is someone who has no parents. An asylum provides... So, in this case, it's for like an orphan or orphanage. So, orphan is someone... Who has no parents? Who's the boat on the line? Uh, I'm going to write on the line what it is. Um, an asylum, it says it's an institution. It, so it provides care. Care um, for the needy. Now, um, an, uh, an, is, an insane asylum is what one of my friends was thinking, and they're not wrong. Asylum is in that, too. Insane asylum is for somebody who has mental issues or used to have mental issues. They will go to an is, insane asylum. Um, I don't know that we necessarily call it that anymore. 
Um, is staying in asylum still a thing? Typically, typically they would go to, a lot of times you would put somebody who has mental issues in a hospital. Um, in this case, it's an orphan asylum or an orphanage. Um, an orphan is someone who has no parents. Or it could be um, somebody whose parents can't care for them. An orphan is somebody who has no parents, but um, some people that ended up in the, like an orphanage would be kids that, whose parents couldn't take care of them. Back in the day, it used to be if you couldn't care, feed and clothe your child, your child might end up in an orphanage. Sometimes parents would surrender or give their children up because they couldn't care for them in the way they need to be cared for. But it provi an asylum provides care for the needy. You ready? All right. If Marilla had said that Matthew had gone to Bright River to meet a kangaroo from Australia, Mrs. Rachel could not have been more astonished. She was actually stricken dumb for five seconds. What do you think stricken dumb means? I wasn't thinking, but you're you're not far off. But if you're stricken, stricken, dumb, dumb could be stupid. Now it used to be people called somebody who cannot hear or speak deaf and dumb we do not call it that anymore but we used to call it deaf and dumb so if somebody is stricken dumb what do you think that means i'm sorry what not not believed it that's a good guess Okay, somebody who's stricken dumb. So if you freeze, what are you not doing? Not. Not. Unable to speak. Because Mrs. Lind was talking, and then all of a sudden she's, ah! You know, like, have you ever, somebody ever said anything to you, and you're like, uh -oh. you're not talking? Do you know what I'm saying? You're not talking? <laughs> Struck dumb. Struck and dumb. Unable to speak. Um... She was actually stricken dumb for five seconds. It was unsupposable that Marilla was making fun of her, but Mrs. Rachel was almost forced to suppose it. Are you in earnest, Marilla, she demanded when voice returned to her. Yes, of course, said Marilla, as if getting boys from orphan asylums in Nova Scotia were part of the usual spring work on any well-regulated Avonlea farm. Instead of being an unheard of innovation. Okay. I just thought about this. Yeah. In Star Wars, where um, Darth Vader gets mad, he can't kill himself, like, with the person that's lost. Mm. So, we sh so in Star Wars, Darth Vader, is that what you said? Yeah. Sh makes people not talk, so he strikes them dumb. Or they be yeah. stricken dumb? Okay. 
Um, that was a good connection. Um, Mrs. Rachel felt that she had received a severe jolt, severe mental jolt. She thought in exclamation points, oh boy, Marilla and Matthew Cuthbert, of all people, adopting a boy from an orphan asylum. Well, the world was certainly turning upside down. She would be surprised at nothing after this. Nothing. What on earth put such a notion into your head, she demanded disapprovingly. This had been done without her advice being asked, and must perforce be disapproved. Well, we've been thinking about it for some time. All winter, in fact, returned Marilla. Mrs. Alexander Spencer was up here one day before Christmas, and she said she was going to get a little girl from the asylum over in Hopetown of the spring. Oh, that's right now, right? In the spring? We just had spring yesterday? Her cousin lives there, and Mrs. Spencer had, has visited here and knows all about it. So Matthew and I have talked it over off and on ever since. We thought we'd get a boy. Matthew is getting up in years. You know, he's 60, and he isn't so spry as he once was. His heart troubles him a good deal. And you know how desperate hard it's got to be to get hired help. There's never anybody to be had but those stupid, half-grown, little French boys. And as soon as you do get one broke into your ways and taught something, he's up and off to the lobster canneries or the states. Now, is it appropriate to call somebody a stupid, half-grown, little French boy? No, that's not kind at all. Um... At first, Matthew suggested getting a Bernardo boy, but I said no, flat to that. They may be all right. I'm not saying they're not, but no London Street Arabs for me. I said, give me a native born at least. There'll be a risk no matter who we get. But I'll feel easier in my mind and sleep sounder at nights if we get a born Canadian. So in the end, we decided to ask Mrs. Spencer to pick us pick us out one when she went over to get her little girl we heard last week she was going so we sent her word by richard spencer's folks at carmody to bring us a smart likely boy of about 10 or 11. we decided that would be the best age old enough to be some use in doing chores right off and young enough to be trained up proper we mean to give him a good home and schooling. We had a telegram from Mrs. Alexander Spencer today. The mailman brought it from the station saying, oh, telegram. What does telegram mean? Phone. Far. 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 Sound. Sound. Far. Sound. Isn't that interesting? Telegram. Mrs. Uh, the mailman brought it from the station saying they were coming on the 5.30 train tonight. So Matthew went to Bright River to meet him. Mrs. Spencer will drop him off there. Of course, she goes on to White Sand Station herself. Mrs. Rachel prided herself on always speaking her mind. She proceeded to speak it now, having adjusted her mental attitude to this amazing piece of news. Well, Marilla, I'll tell I'll just tell you plain that I think what you're doing is mighty foolish thing. A risky thing, that's what. You don't know what you're getting. You're bringing a strange child into your house and home, and you don't know a single thing about him, nor what his disposition is like, nor what sort of parents he had, nor how he's likely to turn out. Why, it was only last week I read in the paper how a man and his wife went up to the island, took a boy out of the orphan asylum, and he set fire to the house at night. Set it on purpose, Marilla, and nearly burnt them to a crisp in their beds. And I know another case 
where an adopted boy used to suck the eggs. They couldn't break him of it. If you had asked my advice in the matter, which you didn't do, Marilla, I'd have said, for mercy's sake, not to think of such a thing, that's what. This Job's comforting seemed neither to offend nor alarm Marilla. She knitted steadily on. I don't deny there's something in what you say, Rachel. I've had some qualms myself. But Matthew was terrible set on it. I could see that. So I gave in. It's so seldom Matthew sets his mind on anything that when he does, I always feel it's my duty to give in. And as for the risk, there's risks in pretty nearly everything a body does in this world. There's risks in people's having children of their own. If it comes to that, they don't always turn out well. And then Nova Scotia is right close to the island. It isn't as if we were getting him from England or the States. He can't be much different from ourselves. Well, I hope it will turn out all right, said Mrs. Rachel in a tone that plainly indicated her painful doubts. Only don't say I didn't warn you if he burns Green Gables down or put strychnine in the well. I heard of a case over in New Brunswick. There was an orphan asylum child that did that and the whole family died in fearful agonies. Only it was a girl in that instance. Strychnine, right? We think strychnine is. If they died, what would that be? What would be your guess? Yeah, so strychnine is a bitter, it's called a, it's a bitter poison. A bitter poison. Is it, um, is it salt bitter? What? It's not salt, is it, um, Yeah, so so you're thinking bitter. I'm thinking of poison. Yeah, here poison like, kills you. What poison? Is that what them, like, the king cobra snake? Yeah. yeah. Like, it, venom is a type of poison. A snake venom is a type of poison. It can kill you. Poison ivy makes you super itchy. It's not poison. It doesn't feel very good. Yeah, it's pretty terrible. All right. Well, we're not getting a girl, said Marilla, as if poisoning wells were pure, a purely feminine accomplishment and not to be dreaded in the case of a boy. I never dream of taking a girl to bring up. I wonder at Mrs. Alexander Spencer for doing it. But there, she wouldn't shrink from adopting a whole orphan asylum if she took it into her head. Mrs. Rachel would have liked to have stayed until Matthew came home with his imported orphan, but reflecting that it would be a good two hours at least before his arrival, she concluded to go up the road to Robert Bell's and tell the news. So now she's gossiping, right? She's going to go tell everybody. Like, yeah, Mrs. Fitch, yep. Um, it would certainly make a sensation to second to none. And Mrs. Rachel dearly loved to make a sensation. Sensation is what? What do you think a sensation is? I think a sensation is like, can I act it out because I don't know how to explain it? Act quick, girlfriend. Yeah, so sensation, in this case, it's an awareness. Awareness. Of making people aware of something or a feeling. Um, in this case, she wants everybody to look at her and pay attention to her, right? She wants to make a sensation. She wants everybody to stop what they're doing and like, <gasps> to Mrs. Rachel Lynn, what Mrs. Rachel Lynn's doing. So she took herself away somewhat to Marilla's relief, for the latter felt her doubts and 
fears reviving under the influence of Mrs. Rachel's pessimism. What is pessimism? If you're pessimistic, you focus on good stuff? Yeah, so pessimism means you focus on bad stuff. So they're looking at all the bad stuff. So when Mrs. Rachel Lynn was talking, she told her all the bad stories. Did she tell her one good story about what happened with an orphan? Nope. Nope, she just said all the bad stuff. Well, of all the things that ever were or will be ejaculated Mrs. Rachel when she was safely out of the lane. What do you think ejaculated means in this case? Well, I never. Well, it is. Um, sometimes ejaculates in the conversation. Ah, disrupts or interrupts. So in this case, disrupts or interrupts uh, it specifically means to utter suddenly and vehemently so okay so ejaculate uh, well of all things that ever were or will be ejaculate mrs. Rachel when she was safely out in the lane it does really seem As if I must be dreaming. Well, I'm sorry for that poor young one. And no mistake, Matthew and Marilla don't know anything about children. And they'll expect him to be wiser and steadier than his own grandfather. If so, bees he ever had a grandfather, which is doubtful. It seems uncanny to think of a child at Green Gables somehow. There's never been one there for Matthew and Marilla were grown up when the new house was built, if they ever were children, which is hard to believe when one looks at them. I wouldn't be in that orphan's shoes for anything. My, but I pity him. That's the, what? So uncanny is our last one. So I said, I'm going to back it up where it said it. Um, it seems uncanny to think of a child at Green Gables somehow. What do you think uncanny means? Mm, not unfortunate, but you're close. Uncanny. Almost unfortunate, so maybe like cute? What? Confused? Not confused. Yeah, unreal. Beyond normal, not expected. Not expected. Oh, I gotta hurry. So, said Mrs. Rachel to the wild rose bushes out of the fullness of her heart. Oh, but if she could have seen the child who was waiting patiently at the Bright River Station at that very moment, her pity would have been still deeper and more profound. So let's look at this. Um, I said one and... Four yesterday question number two says how does Rachel feel about Marilla's decision that was pretty obvious right how do you know so how does she feel how do you know you need to support what you think so you can support it from information in the book you could put a page number and use a quote you need to support it from the book number three how would you describe Mrs. Rachel Lind? I would prefer you describe her character. Remember we have that character sheet that I gave you from Freedom Crossing? So look for a 
character or characteristics. Character or characteristics from that sheet. Any questions? All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye.